My name's Robin Salmon, and I'm Vice President of Art and Historical Collections and Curator of Sculpture. This property is what used to be four separate rice plantations. It was consolidated into a hunt club in the early 20th century. And then the Huntingtons, Archer and Anna Huntington, bought this property in 1930 to use as a winter home. And by the middle part of 1931, they had established Brook Green Gardens. They began to learn what they had here, so they decided to establish Brook Green Gardens. And its original name was Brook Green Gardens, a Society for Southeastern Flora and Fauna. Anna always placed her sculpture wherever they lived, placed it outdoors, also within the, the home and any buildings they had on the property. So, of course, she began to place her own work here, but eventually uh, began to incorporate the work of other artists because they were in the Great Depression. And sculptors had lost their patrons, so the Huntingtons began to acquire sculpture for Brook Green to help those struggling artists. Her work was, was in the classical vein, uh, often heroic. She did a lot of equestrian sculptures with uh, men and women on horseback, both life-size and over-life-size, monumental in fact. Diana of the Chase is a life-size, actually a little over-life-size figure that she did in 1922. It validated her work because it received the Saltus Award for Merit from the National Academy of Design. In fact, it was so popular that she continued to receive orders for that sculpture until she could no longer use the mold to cast it. But two years after she created Diana of the Chase, she also did a younger version of Diana. The pose is the same without uh, the hound leaping at Diana's feet, and obviously a much younger uh, sculptor. In fact, Diana, or Artemis, the Greek version of Diana, was uh, one of the more popular subjects in art history, from antiquity up to the present, both in paintings and sculpture. The children's garden came in and of course, that part of the sculpture garden existed, but the thought was to create a, a place where children could go and learn about sculpture. So the things uh, that were selected specifically to go into the children's garden were pieces already in the collection that would be something that would be of interest to a child. Now, there's a, a section known as the Bear's Den, and there are three different sculptures of bears, three different artists. Mother and Baby Bear is by Marshall Fredericks. Mother Bear in that sculpture invites children to sit in her lap. And I used to worry about that when Marshall was still living. I said something to it about it and he said, don't, don't worry, I made that for a child to sit in the Mother Bear's lap. It doesn't have to just be outdoor sculpture. We also have several indoor galleries. This is the Stanley and Naomi Blyfeld Gallery, a place created to house some of Stanley's sculpture. He wanted the emphasis to be on forms found in nature, which of course is one of our purposes. We also have several works by South Carolina sculptor Granger McCoy here, as well as small pieces by many other artists in the collection, both historic and contemporary. One place, aside from our other indoor galleries, that I would encourage you not to miss is the Offner Center. That's our visible storage facility. There are over 600 pieces of sculpture just in that one building. They are the little jewels of the collection, many acquired by Anna Hyatt Huntington and Archer Huntington 
everywhere you're going to see something wonderful. Don't be afraid to come to a sculpture garden. That, that sounds perhaps like something that would be uh, dull or something you wouldn't be interested in. But I can assure you, once you get here, you are going to really enjoy it. The way the sculpture and the plants are intermingled is very much uh, what makes Brook Green magical. And there are so many other things here, the history of the property, the uh, zoo. Literally, there is something for everyone at Brook Green Gardens. Thank you.